there are some stark differences in the approach one has to take in sales as compared to that in marketing. Because while marketing is all about your activities at the top of the funnel, sales is right at the bottom. So how does one wade through the differences and strike a perfect balance between the two? Let's find that out from our guest on today's episode. Fall in love with selling as you acquire the right mindset, selling style and sales process that helps you take your business solution to more prospects, potential clients and the world at large. If you are a women entrepreneur who is looking to get more sales, scale and sustainability in your business, you have reached the right place. I'm Roshni Baronia. Your host for the show is The Sales, which is all about helping you bring your authentic and influential self to each sales conversation. Hello, Maisha. Thanks for joining us for the show today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. I love the whole Ace to Sales for women entrepreneurs. It's really needed. So I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. So Maisha, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Sure. My name is Maisha B. Hoy. I always used to be. I have two companies. My first company, which is my bread and butter, is Customer First Marketing. As you can tell, it's focused on marketing to your customers, understanding them, where they are, how they buy, why they buy. And then I create marketing strategies for small businesses and startups around that concept. My second project that I have monetized but it's my passion project is my Yishi's Lemonade Stand. And that's my own personal blog on the challenges I have faced being a mompreneur, single mompreneur. And it's sometimes humorous. Like I go to, I went to networking at the wrong place. And how do I do things like that when I'm so organized and so together? <laughs> but, you know, so I do have fun with the Maisha Lemonade Stand, but my bread and butter is customer first marketing. And that's what I'm talking to you today about. Right. Oh, that sounds so, so interesting. So I would love to hear about your passion project. <laughs> so why did you start blogging uh, around it? And what were your specific challenges as a mompreneur? I started blogging because I left my last company. So my last company was, and it's a good part of the story, was successful. And we were being acquired. We were acquired. I think at that time we were already acquired and we were just in this waiting pattern. And I realized that I wanted to go off on my own. So I went to the bosses. They gave me a nice package, but it was like immediately. Like, I don't know if they didn't want me there <laughs> or what. But I was like, okay, this is what you want to do. Here's what we're going to give you. Go forth and prosper. And so I didn't have a website and it didn't have anything. I was like, well, it'd be easy for me to establish a presence if I just created a blog. So in 2012, I said, I'm trying to focus on entrepreneurs. The lemonade stand is normally our first time that we try to be an entrepreneur when try we're a kid. Try to be an entrepreneur, yes. So first time at entrepreneurship. <laughs> yes, it's like, okay, I did. My first foray was I bought cars and tried to sell them in the neighborhood. But so that's where Maisha's lemonade stand started in 2012. And it started with me just recognizing I needed some kind of presence to say, here's who I am. This is what I'm doing. And I was able to build out from there. And then two years later, I actually created customer first marketing. Wow. Yeah, awesome. So I, and I'm a single mompreneur. So that was part of it. So I have a lot of confidence in my ability. Obviously, I knew that I had the experience and knowledge, but it was scary to have a mortgage and a car note and then decide, hey, I want to do this and just go ahead and do it. So it's been a fun journey. It's been a learning journey. I'm, it's just been, I, I love the whole process of being an entrepreneur. All the good stuff, of course, you love, but I really love how it makes us resilient. And I saw that was on your website, that resilient is a key thing for all of us. And you face your fear. You have to face fears. And when you are all by yourself, as I was raising a teenage, a son who's now 16, you know, I, I know I can do this. That's the point. I, I know I can do it. Even if I fail, I'll just get back up and do it again better. Awesome. 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 Kudos to you. So Maisha, of course, uh, like you've just shared that it's been a long journey for you. And over these years, you've learned so much. What are some of the best practices that you have adopted and acquired as an entrepreneur, as a mompreneur, which have helped you in sales and marketing throughout your career as a business owner yourself, not as something you teach your clients? 
specifically, but as yourself running your own business, what are the, some of the best practices that you have developed in selling? What makes you great at selling? So let me say that I knew I could do marketing, you know, check. I lived in New York. I was in retailing for about 10 years. So I knew I could sell and do customer service, but I did not know how much I would enjoy selling. And I guess you have to stake it until you enjoy it. But when you get your first customer, and I don't care if it's $2 or $100 or $10,000. If it doesn't bring you joy, then you may need to bring someone in to help you. So I think one of the things that I learned that makes me great is one, I love hearing the stories behind how my companies, my clients started their companies, why they started their companies, just the story behind where they are and why we're talking today. And because I enjoy hearing it, I'm a great listener. So I'm able to craft proposals that I think my proposals could be award winning because they really do capture what the clients said their problems were, what I believe I can do to help solve their problem and again, how I can do that. So I think that one of the things I makes me great is, is I, I listen very well. And right. people really love my proposal. When I first started, and I don't know if it's because my proposal is so great, I had like a 50% close rate, but then I realized maybe my prices were too low, but that's another conversation that we could have right. about that. But yeah, I think to be great at it, you have to really understand that yes, sales can be emotional because people are telling you no, but every time they tell you no, it's a chance to get better. So listen to what the clients are saying. That's one of my number one. Try not to over talk them. That's how I think that I am particularly great at quote, great at selling. Awesome. So yeah, that is uh, very correctly said that once you understand what your client is going through, where they are, why they do what they do, that's when you are able to fit in your solution in a better way because you are able to understand their problem and give a better solution to them. Yeah. And I sounds marketing speak, but really marketing and sales, if you think about it in the day, it's all about the relationship. So how do you build that relationship with a client unless you consider them a friend? I don't mean consider them someone you're there to help. So I, you know, I'm a marketing person, so I use buzzwords all the time, but it really is taking that moment or time to really understand what they're looking for and really build a solution, whether it's marketing, IT, it's a better clothing, swimwear, whatever it is that fits what they're looking for. And I think if you can do that, you'll be great at sales. You're not even selling anymore. You're just helping the customer get to where they want to go. And that's how I view my business. I'm just helping you grow. Right. So in fact, uh, that was uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to bring you specifically onto the show because you have a marketing background. And this Mm -hmm. conversation between the differences of sales and marketing, it's like a war between sales (laughs) and marketing all the time because in corporates, in bigger organizations, there are separate verticals who cater to the sales function and who cater to the marketing function. But in a small business, those lines are blurred. There is not a clear demarcation between sales and marketing. Probably in a small business, the solopreneur is herself doing the entire end-to-end process of uh, attracting the client and then signing them on board as uh, someone whom they are going to serve. Then how do you as a professional see this aspect of integration of sales and marketing? So how do you design integrated sales and marketing campaigns. This is is another great topic because that is why I thought I could do my have my own company. Number one, my last vice president of sales and I work very well together. And what that meant for us was we collaborated on campaigns. I would create a campaign, share it with the salespeople so they knew what was going on. And that way, when their customers got our emails, the conversation was already there. So as we're small, we need to think big. And I always tell my customers, when I, my clients, we're doing this today so that when you grow and you replace me because you need to hire interns because we set everything up so great, they are, we're all working together. We're aligned. So so the number one thing I want all my clients to leave with is that sales and marketing is aligned. So when you design a campaign and whether you design 
your marketing plan, a campaign, it always starts off with who are your audience. Now, because you are working with, let's just use sales example. You are working with sales. You'll just use example of sales and marketing working together because that's the way it is. If you are trying to go after a new audience, you need to target that audience and you need to do the due diligence, who they are, where they are, why they buy, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that can be in your buyer's persona. If you haven't done it, then you should do that now. Right. The Once you find out where they are, and so I think one of the things that comes up is where do I play? So where do I put my effort into? So let's just use social media. Social media has so many different platforms. So you have to pick the one that you're going to put your time and effort into. So you find your target audience and you decide you're going to do LinkedIn. You create the message and the message can, should be tied into your overall message, but specifically towards that campaign. And then the integration piece is where you're going to deliver that message. Now we're assuming we're one person, but we also know our customers, even though we're going to spend all of our time on LinkedIn, they're also on Facebook. We need to have our email list. If we don't have our database or email list, I suggest everyone start that today. I just finished an engagement where I thought the client had a database of over a thousand people. It was only Mm -hmm. 60. So we are building (laughs) from scratch. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because you want to be able to convert these people into your client. So you deliver the message, your key message, and you also have your call to action. Most people don't forget to ask, and this is something that women do as well. We don't close with, when are you going to call me? When are we going to, when's the next step in our process? When am I going to hear from you? Do I get the deal? Your call to action in marketing helps you close that business. It helps the customer decide whether they really want to do business with you. So if you're doing social media campaign on LinkedIn, where you're trying to get people to pay you for consulting and you for, don't tell them to click this link or to make, book the appointment, you're already far behind. And then the part that we always don't do that I, even I'll do it, you thank the customers. And because of automation tools out there, you don't have to physically write out the thank you, but you can thank them the moment they make that purchase and try to get them back into your sales process. So it's kind of an integrated, automated way of delivering your sales message. But number one, or number one, whatever, is to thank them and start that process over again. And that's how you create business. That's how you create leads. And that's how you create loyal customers who become part of your company's history. The unsexy secret of growing sales is that not everyone is great at strategic planning. But did you know that you are 42% more likely to achieve your income goals if you have a system that motivates, tracks and improves your progress on a daily basis? The Personal Sales Planner is that very intuitive and holistic sales planning tool which can help you break down your lofty income goals into manageable milestones and doable daily actions. And guess what? You have to spend just 10 minutes with it every single day. So grab your sales planner from bit.ly slash psp-37. The link is given in show notes. It is the only tool you will ever need to do your sales planning. So grab your link from the show notes. It is bit.ly slash psp-37. Right. That's so well explained. So just to add to it, how I view marketing and sales is marketing is like when you are holding a loudspeaker and speaking to the world and sales is when you are having a coffee cup with you and having that one-to-one conversation. (laughs) It's so funny because I, going back to us being solopreneurs, we're doing it all. But I always say, marketing is going to cover you. We're going to make sure your customer knows who you are before you walk in the door. And then for most of us, marketing turns over the lead to sale. So I like to be the person now, like, and this is another thing that worked well at the last corporation I worked with. I had my marketing team go out with the salespeople and right. we learn directly from them. Oh, okay. So this is a, I, I'm a big IT person. I love business intelligence. So I just always love go out on business intelligence sales calls. This is what they really want. As opposed to me telling you, like, I know what business intelligence does. I can give you three key messages that how it helps you improve visibility, da, 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 da. But to, the customer just wanted to make sure it was simply that he could read it in a simple form. So it's good to have sales and marketing together. And I want my customers to grow, fire me, use me as a consultant, but bring in other people to help go because we want them to get grow fast. So bring in their next sales marketing person, their intern, and teach them the way. So if you can align your sales and marketing at the beginning, everything you're doing now 
as a solopreneur, do it when you get bigger. Share the message, share what the goals are, share the audience. And then your salesperson will say, hey, this person really, is this this message is really resonating with our target audience. Can we do another right. campaign around that? And that's how you grow your business. You got to keep sales and marketing together. Right. Even though salespeople get to be, drive the sexy cars. And if you, know, if you are <laughs> corporate, structure your uh, next agreement to get some commission and business development, some money. That works, that works for everybody. <laughs> True. That's the place <laughs> where the war starts, actually. Right, right. But I think luckily with, with sales, with automation tools like HubSpot, Constant Contact, MailChimp, they're all getting into automation. You're now giving your salesperson so much more data than they ever would have been able to close the sale. And so you literally, you know, do the business. And as a CEO, we know our business. We could close and we are going to close. But again, we want them to grow. And so we want the salespeople to be able to close faster. So it is a blurred line, but I say working together is the best way to do it. Right. Absolutely. So coming to one of the biggest challenges that uh, small business owners, especially women face is making decisions about what marketing channel is the best for them, how to invest, how much to invest in marketing, both in terms of money and in time and efforts. So do you have any piece of advice on that? Yeah. So money wise, just start off with the 10% rule of your uh, overall company budget that at least gives you a baseline of money. So just do 10 to 12%, call it a day, start from there. Because what you do as you go forward making these decisions is you see what is working and what is not working. And that way it can help you increase or decrease. So if you know you want to make $100,000, 10% of that can go to your marketing. The next question is interesting, but it goes back to the customer. So as you can tell, hopefully by this in this conversation, it's all about the customer. So who are your customers and where do they play? So if you are, um, we'll use um, lingerie person. So mm-hmm. your customer may be steers a little bit younger than normal. So where they shop. So that's why this, the, the, the importance of where best your time comes into play based off where your customers are. The other part of it is where do they buy or where do they, cl- where, would, where would you close? So Instagram is great mm-hmm. for engagement, but it's hard to convert them. You still have to get them into your system. You still have to call them. So if you want to engage, maybe use, use Instagram, but maybe you just have to make sure that your website is your silent salesperson. So the question of where to invest is really really based off understanding where your customers are and understanding where they shop and understanding some of the decisions they make into buying. So if you're new, you have to go off what already exists, which is, okay, what's the data that tells you where to go? Mm -hmm. Once you get a little bit more into the business, start tracking where your customers are coming from. So all that digital marketing, Google analytics to your site, or if you have a website that tracks where your customers are coming from, Mm -hmm. all that comes into play and tells you kind of where you need to focus your efforts. Effort. Right. And so that's the second part of which channel. And so the more customer data you have, both about before you start selling to them, while you're selling to them, and after you're selling to them, it helps formulate your marketing decision. And then as you hopefully get bigger and bigger, you know your team will get bigger and then you will be marketing all across all platforms. But I would say 10 to 12% of your budget, 10 to 12% of the revenue you want to make, apply it to marketing. Look at it every month if you can to figure out where your dollars are being spent and how they're they're being spent and then really focus on where your customers shop to decide what platform you should invest in. Right. Absolutely. So any particular metrics you have in mind, which people can track because uh, not everybody is good in uh, analytics or uh, reading (laughs) data. So any particular metrics you follow in your business or suggest to your clients? Yeah. So I have to say, in fact, I won't blog about it. I love data. Right. I love IT. I'm a marketing geek. So here's the most important thing. If you have Facebook, Facebook gives you data. It Mm -hmm. tells you the likes you receive, the engagement you receive, whether it's better or low compared to the time period before. So you can see the posts that were generated the most results. So there's a lot of data already there, but the number one 
is last year versus this year or what I look like last month versus this month. I look at the sales figures. I mean, that's it's a no brainer, but sales figures. And I look at where my sales came from, especially as we're small and we don't have time, money, or actually resources to wait. Right. I look at for my clients, the website visit, how, how many people visited, how long they visited, the pages they visited. That helps me formulate, for instance, right now, my website for January, Right. It's getting so many hits on branding that I am updating my branding page because I know there's opportunity there and I'm creating a whole campaign around it. So last year versus this year or last month versus this month, look at your social media engagement. I think Twitter has it. Instagram has it. LinkedIn. I haven't even looked at LinkedIn. I just don't do that much on there anymore. Facebook has it. Look at your website visit. That will tell you which pages are getting hit the most. Track where your leads are coming from. So that's another piece and I'm sure you can help out with integrating the sales system so that it all comes into one database. But yeah, last year, this year, I think that's the most important thing, revenue wise and where your customers are coming from and who they are and right. all the analytics sites have, all the social media sites have it and your website should have. If right. not, get Google Analytics. Right. Absolutely. So identify the best source that your uh, prospects and the clients are coming from and then double down on that. That's the basic minimum yeah, people exactly. can do. Right. Awesome. Exactly. Exactly. It can be all this, like, like I said, I can, I love data. Data. And data help is how I get paid. I'm sure data is how, you know, if, if I'm bringing in leads into my client system, number one, if I'm converting them into sales, number two. So data from a marketing consultant, a sales consultant, it helps us sell the story. Right. I guess uh, with the tech getting better day by day, it is so easy for like people who are not very good at data analytics also to just make sense of that data, which the platforms are giving as simple data, Instagram, Facebook, even the website, Google Analytics uh, data, it is so simple for people who are not so thorough with uh, artificial intelligence or business intelligence to just make yeah. sense of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Where I come in is clients don't have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I have the time to do it. I take and I do recommend if you know, especially when we're starting off, you have some kind of baseline. So when I do my invoices and I do it once a month, that's when I really look at what my clients have done. So I recommend for all these solopreneurs out there is, and I think I wrote about this on my blog. I have to, I have to send you a couple of links. Once a month, look at that data. I mean, you when you're starting off, you know whether you're, you're getting hits because you see the revenue, but take a look because that becomes part of your business process and things that you'll have your you know chief strategy officer, your chief growth officer, officer, all of you will start looking at this data and be coming up with the story of how to improve. So if you do it now and becomes part of your process, then it just will continue on. And looking at the numbers, this is especially for, you know, for sales, looking at the numbers helps you close sales. Looking at where your data and where your customers are will help you close sales. It, it eliminates kind of the uncertainty because you know, and when you eliminate uncertainty, you I think you flourish. Yes, that's the best piece of advice. Eliminate the those uncertainties. And that's how you will eliminate the gap between sales and marketing. Awesome. Awesome. Thank think, you so Yeah, I much. think I like that too. I'm going to write it down. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice quote. Good job. <laughs> I have to listen to this blog again, to this, this podcast, just to write that stuff down. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much, Maisha. It was such a fun conversation and such an insightful conversation. I'm sure people will uh, learn so much from this conversation today. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me and this is a great great podcast i was looking at the topics i'm like i need to go back i'll share some of it on my blog that fit the topic oh wow that's so I nice think this, this is a good topic yeah wow thank you so yeah. much okay Marcia. i'm all about supporting us women entrepreneurs oh yes definitely thank you more power to women <laughs> <laughs> more power especially women history month yes yes <laughs> thank, thank you uh, so much for yeah. having me i appreciate it welcome thank you so much bye Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode. I'm sure you were able to find some key learnings and takeaways from today's episode, which will help you grow your business to the next level. And if that's the case, make sure that you share this episode with two of your business buddies because you never know that they might also find some insight which will help them in their business. Knowledge, after all, grows by sharing it further, right? So do share it with two of your business buddies. Also, if you like Ace the Sales podcast, 
us consider sharing five star review and rating on apple itunes because that will help us take the podcast to many more women just like yourself who are looking to find sales success in their business also it will mean the world to us especially myself and my team who are putting loads of efforts to bring this podcast to you and lastly remember to connect with me on instagram at roshni underscore baronia because i would love to know more about you your business and what is it that you need help with when it comes to selling so connect with me on instagram leave a review and share the podcast with two of your business buddies i will meet you next thursday stay tuned and stay safe and happy selling